Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my quick Let's Play of Dark Souls, uh, in which I'll be taking a look at its game design and the philosophies it puts forward. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole game, just playing through it until I've said everything I've learned thus far. I've done some research on the papers that have been released on this game and just some of my own ethnographic research as well. Um, but this is my character, the Crooked Man. He's a deranged, naked man with a crooked face, uh, and he's looking like beef jerky right now, but uh, if, if you don't know much about this game, we're basically this creature called an undead, a uh, former human who has been cursed with immortality uh, and corralled to an asylum by the gods to await the end of the world. And then all of a sudden, this nameless knight drops a key down to us, uh, beginning our journey. Um, and we bust out of our cell. Um, so you can sort of see that in this item description. Uh, dungeon cell key. So, key to the dungeon of the undead asylum to the north. A mysterious knight, without saying a word, shoved a corpse down into the cell. And on its person was this key. Who was this knight? And what was his purpose? There may be no answers, but one must still forge ahead. Dark Souls does a lot of exposition in these item descriptions, uh, and in the environment design as well. Um, so unlike other games, you kind of have to go looking for it. Um, other games will just have it in the cutscenes and the, the dialogue. Who is that man in the window? Let's go, let's go find out. This is kind of funny. You, you can actually see the first boss creeping on you from the rafters, ready to pounce. But a new player probably wouldn't be able to see that, and would probably just come here and... Yeah. Oh. Oh. I keep forgetting the controls! Two damage. Oh no, what are we gonna do? We can't beat him! He's too... he's too large! We just walk away. And the boss music stops. What you gonna do? Oh. So Dark Souls actually does that a lot. Um, where it'll foreshadow uh, NPCs and items that are yet to be discovered. Um, it really makes the world feel larger than it is, like, it feels like it extends far beyond the level's confines. Here's our first item, a dinky little shield. And a club. Like the primitive, deranged man that we are. Let's go club some people. My first victim. Oh, one hit, jeez. We're very powerful. Once again, we can see the nameless knight through the bars, um, just waiting for us to interact with him. And if you come over here as well, you can see another example. This item atop this broken staircase we can't reach yet but if we come back here uh, later on in the game we can get to it that sort of thing just sort um, serves to demonstrate to the player how limited their understanding of the world is at this current point in time like what is that item how do I get up there what do I do to get up there these are all things that the player doesn't know yet uh, the game has a lot of mysteries and uh, the player doesn't have a lot of mastery Oh, which is why they get rolled by boulders. By naked men. Oh. Yeah, take that. That's what you deserve. He did. And through here we can actually go talk to the Nameless Knight. 
who seems to be in rough shape after being busted down and through the ceiling. I really like this bit of writing from From Software. They set you up as this chosen undead, destined to carry out a grand prophecy and go on a great journey. It's what the player expects from a game, uh, this sort of power fantasy where we're the hero of the story and the universe revolves around us. But later on, we'll see that that isn't really the case. But a new player will have gotten to this point and say, uh, okay, this is my purpose, my motivation for navigating this cruel, decaying world. I'm going to go forth on behalf of this nameless knight who has given their life so that I may survive. So let's do that. Ah, oh, and he's dead. Poor guy. So unfortunately the Dark Souls servers are down for maintenance uh, at this current time, so we won't be able to experience the amazing multiplayer aspect of this game, uh, which is kind of a shame. Uh, players can like invade you at random, uh, and uh, you can also summon other players to help you with some areas in the game. It's like one of the best parts of it, just the uh, interactions you can have with other players. The fan base of the game is actually quite interesting as well, because there's this get good culture. Uh, it like pressures you to perform uh, like really well and not have much difficulty with the game at all. Uh, it can be quite toxic and intimidating. Like new pre new players will be pressured to. Oh. New players will be pressured to perform well in the game, um, and not die like I just did. I've, I've actually never died in this section, uh, believe it or not. I'm usually more skilled than this, I promise. So yeah, new players will just kind of throw themselves at obviously unbeatable odds over and over again, thinking to themselves, I should be able to beat this, I should be more skilled than this, but... Yeah, we'll, we'll see an example of this a little later in the game. It can be quite difficult for new players to get into this game, um, especially because a lot of the game mechanics are not explicitly stated. Um, like, for example, if we look here, what is a dark sign? What is a black separation crystal? Like, yeah, sure, you can read the item descriptions, but it doesn't really explain that much. Like, this key, you don't really know what this does at this point in the game. Um, and there's other mysteries like, why does my character look like a scrungled up mess, like a big piece of beef jerky, and not like what I created in the character creation screen. And when they go looking for help, like, yeah, sure, there's some helpful people as always, but the majority of people will just say, get good, get good at the game, skill issue. And it's not really that helpful, is it? I do wish we could experience that aspect of the game, but not this time, it seems.
Let's get our souls back and not die to this guy. For starters, wrecked. I came back even stronger than before. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordra. So here we are at Filing Shrine. An area which acts as our hub slash home for the rest of the game, pretty much. And sitting here is the crestfallen knight, who's about to drop some truth bombs on us. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, not the fate. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But... Ah, well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, what do you know? It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> ah, your face! Alright. So, contrary to what the Nameless Knight from before told us, we are really not unique at all. Uh, and the prophecy is a farce created by the gods. So our why for existing at this point uh, doesn't really exist at all. We have no purpose. But as the player goes through the game, uh, the freedoms afforded to them in play style and narrative choices will allow them to form their own purpose uh, out of uncertainty. At long last, the horizon appears free to us again. The sea, our sea, lies open again. Perhaps there has never been such an open sea. Like this quote from Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, the player can cast aside the manipulations of religious authorities and instead form their own identity in this world of possibility. The player can take their own path, both literally in the form of this sprawling world with many paths leading to many places, but also uh, in the game's difficulty as well. The core loop of Dark Souls is really um, try, die, and try again. Failure is a part of it. While failing so many times over the course of the game, um, the player can adjust their playstyle. Uh, whether that's by using a shield or not, by going with a strength build or a dexterity build, um, it's really up to them. So like Sisyphus, who continuously pushes that boulder seeking the catharsis of reaching the top, uh, we, the player, die and die again, seeking the catharsis of victory over adversity. Though this act can be seen as meaningless, um, the player can choose how and why to play this game. Uh, they can choose to carve their own meaning out of this meaningless world. This is where a lot of people like myself have um, really connected to Dark Souls and um, interpreted it as an allegory for life and the human condition. Um, and this is sort of the first time I've considered video games as like works of art with profound meanings that can be taken into our own lives and like cause us to lead our own lives differently. So here we are at Filing Shrine with so many paths before us 
if we look up, we can see Anor Londo and the Undead Berg tower over us. If we look down, we can see Blight Town and the depths of this world. I read this paper by Daniel Vella called No Mastery Without Mystery, Dark Souls and the Ludic Sublime, and he talks a lot about the many ways the game resists the player trying to understand it. One of these being indistinct boundaries. The world reaches so much farther than what the player can see, and it's difficult for the player to be able to visualize it in their mind, especially because the game doesn't have a map. The game also constantly teases us with things we can't reach yet, like the item on the staircase in the asylum, or the demon skulking about our cell in the beginning of the game. Once we reach these places and items later on, the player begins to understand the game more and more. This is one of the many ways the game resists the player understanding it. The player's mastery at this point is engulfed by the game's mysteries. As the player progresses and understands the game systems, they reach a point called the Ludic Sublime, in which the player's mastery engulfs the game's mysteries, and they have a true understanding of the game's inner workings. Another way that the game Another way that the game provides mystery to the player is by something called unclear causes and effects. These are mechanics that present themselves to the player, but don't make themselves obvious. For example, restoring humanity. The player's normal state is hollowed and ugly, but if they use a humanity, they can return to their human form. The player is never told how to do this or what it does. It's an option all the way down in the bonfire menu. And when you do do it, you can't actually see what has changed other than your appearance. The player probably wouldn't be able to tell that they can now summon other players, and also be invaded as well. And they probably wouldn't be able to tell that they can now kindle bonfires as well, to increase the amount of SS flasks they can carry. There's other techniques like undefined entities, which are mechanics or items whose true purpose only makes themselves obvious later on in the game. Or in the case of the Pendant, uh, their purpose is never made clear. The final one put forward by Vela is ergodic irony, the fact that the player's experience of the game is only a partial one. There are many paths that they did not take, playstyles they did not adopt, and they can see this in a player ghost they encounter in the game. These ghosts will appear randomly throughout the game, and they are actually other players in their own world. To the player, these are visions of alternate paths they could have taken, items they could have used, armor pieces they could have found. So, the right way to go from Filing Shrine isn't exactly obvious, so let's explore some of the parts that are present to us. Over here in the graveyard, we encounter these skeletons who are very beefy, calcium-infused boys. They take a lot of hits, and when you finally defeat them, they just get right back up. This is really meant to communicate uh, that the player just can't go here yet, but uh, a new player would probably feel pressured to win in this situation, even though they can't. So they'll just kill these guys over and over again with no end in sight. Again, the game's mysteries overtake our understanding of it. We don't have the ability to kill these enemies yet, but we can still run around and steal their stuff if we're zippy enough. Okay, so going to the spooky scary skeletons didn't work out. Let's go down these stairs instead. And if we go all the way down here into New Londo, We'll encounter these ghosts that we can't even damage. Here's another unclear cause and effect. The player doesn't know here that they need a consumable item in order to damage these enemies, an item that they can't access yet. We can still steal their stuff though. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, I'll be honest, this didn't really turn out the way I wanted to because I didn't really have the time uh, to do a lot of, a lot more extensive research than what I wanted, but this was still a bit of fun and uh, I did learn a lot just doing the research I did and I'll definitely apply all this while, when I'm making games in the future. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye.